This is Norfolk Wildlife Trust Thompson Common, one of the most important nature reserves for the rare wildlife of the Brex. Despite global turmoil in 2020, Norfolk Wildlife Trust has a unique opportunity to purchase land surrounding Thompson Common to restore ancient grassland and pingos that have been lost. Thompson's 400 pingos are among its most important habitats for rare wildlife. I'm meeting geoconservationist Tim Holt Wilson to learn about their importance in landscape history. Explain to me the significance of the pingos in geological history. Geological history, well, you have to cast your mind back 10,000, 12,000 years to when the environment was a periglacial one seasonally frozen topsoil and subsoil and the blisters of ground ice developing possibly driven by injection or what they call segregation of the ice um, in sandy gravelly chalky sediment which we're standing on here. These blisters of ice swell up and then melt and when they melt they produce a circular pond. As they're swelling up the clay and silt, sand, peat on top of them is being shrugged off slightly down the sides of the mound. The overall effect is, after time, you get a slight rampart around the edge of the pond. Thompson Common is very important because of this connection between biodiversity, the wildlife, and the geodiversity, the, the landforms and the geological archive that we talk about. There are clusters of other sites in the Breckland. This is the most important and the most significant of them. The landscape history of Thompson Commons Pingos has translated into exceptional importance for biodiversity. I'm meeting Rachel Norman, Brex Reserve's assistant at Norfolk Wildlife Trust, to learn about some of the rarest species which live here. Rachel, you're the lucky person who gets to look after this magnificent site and its pingos. What are some of the rarest species you take care of here? Yeah, so we have this scarce emerald damselfly here at our pingos. That is a very rare damselfly. It's only found in two places in Britain. So they're attracted to our pingos which are dry seasonally because some of our pingos fluctuate with different water levels throughout the year. And that's to do with their life cycle. So their eggs will overwinter on this tall vegetation that you see coming out of the water. We've had a new dragonfly colonise this site this year, the Southern Migrant Hawker, which is a newly spotted species around here in the UK, and it's, this is the first time it's been recorded here in the Brex and here in Norfolk. And beetles, you have lots of rare beetles found here at Thompson Common. Yes, yeah, so we've got over 600 species here at Thompson Common. The majority of them actually like this aquatic environment. And of the red data species recognised as being of national conservation importance, how many are found associated with Thompson's pingos? We've got 58. 58, that is remarkable. Yeah, that's why this site is nationally important. Thompson Common has belonged to Norfolk Wildlife Trust since 1981, since when much has been achieved for wildlife. John Preston is Conservation Manager and explained what projects are ongoing. Since we bought the site, our management is focused on creating a mosaic of habitats, creating a different level of succession around all the pingos that we have. If you leave these sites to their own devices, they'll all eventually become woodland and the pingos would dry out and we'd lose a lot of species. So what we do is a, a programme of taking scrub off from around them. Some of them we, we leave as they are because some of the re real rare species like some of the mud snails do like a, a real shaded pingo. Most species of invertebrate and amphibians do like it nice and open. So for example the pingo we've got here is one that we restored two winters ago now so that the whole perimeter of it was covered in willow trees and we've taken off the sort of south facing side so the sunlight can get in and you can see a lot of the plants starting to grow and the ecosystem within the pond is, is being restored. We use different species of livestock to help us maintain the grassland habitats at Thompson. 
The comic ponies are particularly good at getting into the, the wetland habitat. They'll go in and graze, actually, sometimes even underwater, and that really helps keep some of the pingos open. John took me to see the next phase in Thompson Commons restoration, the land which is available for sale next year. This, to the untrained eye, looks just like a field. What's the vision for restoring this piece of land? Well, some of the land we, we walked through earlier uh, is already triple SI, uh, so it's, it's a real good quality habitat already. But this is, as, as you see, a, a tumble down arable field. What we'd like to do here is to restore it back to a, a brick grassland, which is you know, the, the real sort of important habitat in this part of the world. And there are already clues that you have as to what this land would have looked like and the wildlife that it would have supported in the past. Absolutely. So we've done quite a lot of historic research, looked at old first edition ordnance survey maps and LIDAR data um, and, and found that there are actually ghost pingos here. This piece of land is not important simply because you can restore brick grassland and pingos here, but also because it adds another piece in the jigsaw puzzle of connectivity of landscape through the brecks. Absolutely. Um, pingos have a unique range of species associated with them, um, but how they move from those pingos into new pingos or new habitat is something that we need to investigate. By making these habitats adjacent to existing habitats will help that, that to happen. Such a project doesn't come without a cost. What help does Norfolk Wildlife Trust need in order to make this vision reality? To buy the land we're stood on now and, and the, the land at Stowe Bedden Common, um, the, the purchase price is over £600,000, uh, which is obviously a lot of money. Um, but we've already had um, donations and, and a, a wonderful legacy, um, so the, the amount of money we're looking for is £200,000. One of the most important animals at Thompson Common is the pool frog. Yvette Martin of Amphibian and Reptile Conservation explained to me why Thompson is so important and how better landscape connectivity would favour the rare frog. It was the last known location of the pool frog before their extinction in the mid 1990s. So there was a, a bit of debate about whether or not pool frogs were native to this country and it wasn't until 1998 when Natural England commissioned a number of research projects to look into the status of the species that we actually found out that they, they were native to this country. By that time we'd lost this population at Thompson Common Natural England carry out some genetic work and it turned out that the closest relatives to our English pool frogs were those from Sweden. In 2005, ARC and Natural England went over to Sweden to collect some stock of pool frogs and under licence brought them back to the UK. We managed to establish a single pool frog population in 2005 and we've been monitoring that population for the last 10 years. And in 2015, we decided the time was right to return the pool frogs to Thompson Common. We decided Thompson Common was the best place because it provides ideal habitat for the pool frog. It is an open woodland site with a large network of pingos. And it's really important that you have this network of pingos because pool frogs don't tend to travel long distances. The pingos or the pools or water bodies, they act as a corridor for movement so that the species can expand their natural range at the site. The task ahead of Norfolk Wildlife Trust is huge. The new land must be purchased. A survey must be carried out to see how best to restore it. And the restoration itself must begin. What's critical now is to raise the money to secure the land and secure its future. But with your help, one day perhaps the land could come to look again like this with restored low nutrient grassland, with traditional breeds of livestock grazing and with its ancient pingos once again brought to the light of day. <laughs>